Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of one million dollars, what color is the White House? Um, I know this. I know this. I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance. Okay, judges. That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations, you're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you wanna end up, wanna do all the show and get the brain running with the premise of talk sports on a national level. Full with the topic, sort of like the rubber when it's game time, they like the fat five doing prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The four for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, the first of five and educated. What up, family? First of all, be awesome, man. Let me know if I'm choppy so I can deal with my equipment issues. Uh, so what's good, War Room family? You're once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts, I'm Dev McMillan. I'm at the round table with my Aki, B. Austin, the, the general, uh, Jimmy the Blueprint will join us in a little bit. It was a huge trade in the NBA this week, and we'll break it down completely, so keep it locked right here. Also, make sure you join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 30 minutes when we open up the digital extreme tech hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. But during the week, like we remind you every week on the show, when we're not live on the air, be sure to check out the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Besides our own podcast, The War Room, you can listen to shows such as The Broad Street Line and The Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris, The Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil Maddock and Savard, John Appetit, if you like to eat with the Burtons, On the Couch with the Wilsons, if you're a TV and a movie head, uh, Cover 2 with McMillan and Purdue for everybody who's a big NFL fan, By the Hood with Jimmy the Blueprint and Corey Camp. Uh, Just a Tip, our newest NBA show with Joel, Joel, Ray, and X, um, and a whole lot more, man. We got a lot to offer you on the War Room Sports Podcast Network, so just visit the War Room Sports website at warroomsports.com, click on the WRS Podcast Network tab, or go to our free mobile app, click the network tab there. What up, B? Just, just a Tip, man. They still kill me every time. Um, but uh, I sure. So, you know, you, you're down there in the Georgia area now. Um, impressive. Um, re- repeat the question. Repeat on, repeat on. No, I was saying, what, what, what did the eclipse hit for down there on Monday? Was that an impressive sight oh, down there or what? Oh, God. Man, the pictures were amazing. Like, I... I was downplaying the uh, the impact, you know, on my old head. You know, I've seen one of these before. I've seen an eclipse. It's going to be no- – man, when that thing happened, it was interesting. And to see the sky kind of gray out, it was like the sun was out, but it was like the light was grayish and dimmer. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, I thought it was too, man. And, you know, I was like – I was giving the big FOA to all the people even after – you know, people were like, oh, man, all the hype was for that. I'm like, come on, man. That's a, a, a nature phenomenon that, you know, you don't get to see a lot in your lifetime. I think the last one was in like 1979, 1976, something something like that a long time ago. Um, there will be another one in like 2024, so it's not going to be as long before we see another one. But you know, even if it was just interesting for a few minutes or if you got your little glasses and you looked up two or three times and then went back to what you were doing, it was still something that you don't see, literally something that you don't see every day. And I, I thought it was very impressive. And then, like you said, the photos that came out afterward, you know, I got my little photo, but that was nothing compared to what NASA <laughs> Um, was able to photograph and, Yo, and some other ones. Uh, NASA so. was about their life. <laughs> NASA was about their life. 
that photo that we that we shared uh, the day after, I really think, like, because I've seen some great photos in, in my time, like, even just photos that NASA takes of the Earth itself, you know, from other places in space are amazing. But the, the photo that they got of the eclipse when it was in the, what they call the diamond ring stage, where that one little part shines off and it makes it look like the diamond at the top of a ring. You know, that photo has to be a candidate for greatest photo ever taken. It might not be the greatest, but it it has to be up there somewhere. Yo, I took a different, I had a different feeling and approach. I felt like I honestly actually was in Star Wars. (laughs) I I felt like the Death Star was coming. Yeah, it it was hot, man. Uh, You know, other people... It was acting all above it. Oh, that's what I wasted my time. That's what all the hoopla was about. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Nobody said it was going to be, you know, well, the, uh, fire and brimstone and the, the moon was going to collide with the sun. Yeah, and, just wait. You know, yeah, wait. Hold, hot hold juice off. was going to fall Trump's onto gonna, the earth. Like, nobody said all that. <laughs> Trump and Spence are going to handle that part of life for you in a little bit. So <laughs> just hold the horse, man. I mean. Salute yeah, to the coming. eclipse because it fell on my anniversary of uh, no doubt. my coming together with the greatest human being on earth, a.k.a. my wife. So yeah, we looked at it definitely. as a sign and a celebration. That is, that, that is something great to fall on your day. What you, what you, seven years in now? Yeah, buddy. Seven uh, years lucky, in. And I, ain't got no, and I ain't got no itch. And I ain't got no itch. <laughs> Good. All right, so that's what's up, man. But let's uh, get into what the people are here for. Let's talk some sports. But let's uh, first talk about what happened this week while y'all good people were on that run. At least besides the solar eclipse, because most of y'all should have had your ass at work while it was going on. Um, Unless you're one of the hundreds of thousands of people who actually traveled that day so you can be somewhere in the path of totality. Um, I thought it was great, but I, I wouldn't do all that. <laughs> that was a little much. A little much. <laughs> all right. So, um, bodybuilder Dallas. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to pay some bills. While y'all were on the grind, is brought to you by Direct TV. If you like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, including some of the most extensive sports packages offered by any service, go to directtv.com and order a better TV experience. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to have direct TV. All right. Uh, body Yo, bill- you're a man. You're a man now. You're a man now. We got to pay bills, though. You're a man. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely a man now. I turned into a man uh, this weekend. So, you know, for everybody out there uh, who, who, who wants to welcome me to manhood, my man Mike Gundy did. Come after me. I'm a man. <laughs> Greatest yeah, soundbite ever. A whole lot of stuff happened uh since the last time you guys heard from us. But um bodybuilder Dallas McCarver, who's also the boyfriend of WWE star Dana Brooke. I have no clue about her body of work. Um he died suddenly the other day at the age of twenty six. Um officers responded to a nine one one call at his his residence. Um, in Boca Raton, Florida, just after midnight on August 21st. They said no foul play is expected, and the police are now waiting the medical examiner's report because, B, they think this big mother dude died from choking on food. I'm like, damn, first my man, prodigy, now this big dude. Yo, this is a 300-pound bodybuilder, and... uh, They said he placed eighth in the 2015 Olympia competition. I need to see that lab work, man. I need to see that lab work because at this stage of the game, when you're 300 pounds and your body fat is in the single digit, yeah, I need to see that lab work, man. I'm I'm watching or I watched a, um, a YouTube documentary on steroids and, uh, you know, before I go into it, shout out to the guilty. Uh, I'm not going to mention your names, although y'all love to mention your names because you're on YouTube with it. It really, 
and truly is fascinating to see the level of commitment, the level of narcissism, the level of self-absorption that leads these guys on this bodybuilding quest and the amount of drugs they take in their body to have their muscles poke out and for them to look ridiculous. It really is amazing. Like, it literally, the blood testing, the blood work, this drug to counteract that drug, to counteract this drug. Dog, I can't even begin to get in. If my man was 300 pounds and, and placed eighth in the in Mr. Olympia, yo, he was spending about $8,000 a month just on his supplements. And by wow. supplements, I mean the cream clear. At least, at least. It could be done. That, see, but that's that's either one or two things you brought up. You know, people like that being narcissists. It's it's. I think it's either side of the spectrum. It's either you're a narcissist or your self esteem is on negative six. You know what I'm saying? And and you have to do this kind of stuff. Like I, I saw a bodybuilder um, recently on something who said, basically, I was bullied when I was a kid. Then I found a gym, and I haven't been bullied since. So, you know, you have those kind of things. And when you're getting bullied, then, you know, even though it may not be your fault, usually your self-esteem is down somewhere in the negative area. So that's what forces you to do stuff like that. Or, like you said, you're just a straight-up narcissist and you just have to look a certain way. And then they start taking it too far. It goes farther and farther until it's way too far. Like, I don't understand why dudes even want to look like that. Personally, but oh, yeah. it's crazy! I'm, I've never just, really run into a, a fat female pot belly, but. that likes. Like <laughs> I've never met it. a chick that's like, like, like this is nice. I want my guy to have forty inch arms and right. sixty inch thighs and a and like, like no one really likes. One hundred veins popping out of his body and forehead vascular. the size of a, a Mac truck. Dev, 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 you gotta get Dev, you gotta get vascular. Gotta <laughs> be vascular, more vascular. Yeah, like cause I know chicks like diesel dudes and and built dudes, but when we go into the bodybuilder, the Mister Olympia realm, yeah, that's different. Like like you said, I haven't heard a lot of females saying, you know, that's cool. I need that in my life. So uh, rest in peace to jump. the good brother, though. You know, because if it was, you know, what they said it was then that's really a shame. But w- what you brought up, th- that takes these guys eventually anyway. But rest in peace to the brother. Damn shame what happened to that big dude. Um, your man, speaking of uh, what you just spoke of, speaking of supplements, your man John Bones Jones failed yet another drug test. Um, back at the end of July, you know, he just, basically restarted, re-sparked his career with a vicious knockout of Daniel Cormier. Um, I think that was July 29th. Um, He won the, I think, the light heavyweight title back in that particular bout. But one of the samples, the the test that he took for that particular bout uh, came back with a positive test. And what he tested positive for was a steroid called Turnable? Cocaine? Turn, ter, Turinable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was the substance yeah, that, that he com- tested positive for. Steroid. But the, but the thing steroid. is, though, and, and this is what he and his team are saying, like, early in July, you know, before the bout, they took two random tests, and he passed both of the random tests. The one that he failed was the one that he knew about right before the fight. So they're saying that this has to be the doing of another tainted sample because it's like, how are you going to pass the random ones? And then you get popped on the test that you knew was coming. So do you think that there's something to their claim or do you just think John Jones is the stupidest dude on the planet? Both. Um, (laughs) I believe that this is a lesson and an example that all up-and-coming athletes should pay attention to. And, and really, it can be applied to life, period. When you create a reputation for yourself, fair 
or unfair can never expect the benefit of the doubt. You can never expect the benefit of doubt. It's not coming. John Jones is the most athletic and gifted fighter in that sport. I mean, my man literally is a crackhead because a lot of these yeah. positive tests have nothing to do with performance-enhancing drugs. My wow. man has MDNA in his system. <laughs> yeah, okay. there, no fault. <laughs> so he's out there with stuff that have nothing to do with you performing better unless, of course, maybe you're at an orgy and you got to go all night. But, I, I mean, my point <laughs> is he has – it has Come nothing on. to do with being better. So – when he gets to places like this, what are, what I'm supposed to do about that? Like, I, I, am I supposed to? I'm supposed to get mad at that? Like, shout out to to Sam. I am. I, I can't really. We can dive down into the minutia of this specific situation because we're members of the media. That's what we do. But ultimately, as a sports fan and a fan of that sport, um, and really even I won't say a fan of his, but I support him. I don't feel bad or sad. I don't even I don't even want to entertain whether or not it was a mistake because you've made your bed, John Jones. Right. You've made your right. bed. Yeah, so I get you. Like at this point he's basically just lost the benefit of the doubt because of everything else he's done. I I, I understand that. Um the, the the case sounds compelling. Like I said, you either have to be – I mean, you have to be the dumbest dude in the world if you pass the two random tests earlier in the month and then you fail the one the night before the fight that you know was coming. So we'll see. But I but I definitely agree, and I understand what you're saying um, when we talk about the benefit of the doubt and the fact that certain cats no longer get that. All right, so um, <laughs> the – New England Patriots, we, we've already known for a while that the, the big three of the New England Patriots, uh, uh, Kraft, the owner, Bill Belichick, the head coach, and Tom Brady, the quarterback, we all have known for a while now that they're all Donald Trump supporters. Um, when the Patriots visited the White House after winning their latest championship, uh, they went a little farther than teams usually go when they visit the president after a championship. It's standard to give the president gifts, and the, the standard gift is usually uh, a jersey, a customized jersey, whether it's signed by everybody or not. You know, it has the president's name on it. It has the president's number, you know, 45 for, for Donald Trump. But uh, Kraft went above and beyond, and he actually gave Donald Trump a championship ring. Now, you know, these rings aren't cheap and usually everybody in the organization the back, who had something to do with the championship to gets one. Well, go ahead, B. What'd you say? I was just saying there's a, there's a backstory to this be, beyond uh, the big three being bastions of white supremacy in America. He, he and Donald Trump are, are homies. And yes, that is that is my catchphrase from now until you know further notice. <laughs> that's your, white, that's your white, catchphrase. White supremacy. Bell. Yeah, white <laughs> ring the bell again. Ring the bell. <laughs> um, and at the end of the episode, if you can count how many times the bell was rung, we can talk via social media. You know, get at me on them, and you may win a prize. Um. Donald Trump and Robert Kraft go way back, um, and they have a very close relationship. I don't know whether it's, you know, genuine or it's just Donald associating with winners or what, whatever, but it is tight. And, and Kraft went into elaborating on that relationship as he made excuses for his, uh, for his support, which is, you know, when his, I believe when his wife passed away, Donald Trump called him if not daily, then weekly, to check up on him and actually flew in to where he was on a regular basis to 
show empathy and compassion and, and help him mourn the loss of his wife. So, you know, I, I, I get why Kraft feels this um, attachment or bond with Donald Trump. I get it. If, though, if what he's saying is true, I get it and understand. But I also know this. When you have someone who is a true friend, they're going to stand with you, they're going to love you, but they're going to call you on the carpet and hold you accountable for the things that you do wrong. And I never have ever seen Robert Kraft call Donald Trump publicly, that is, on the carpet for this total disaster that he's running. So, Well, you know that Robert Kraft is one of the guys who – Funded the campaign with a million dollar or more donation. But back to the rings, though, um, the, the whole story behind championship rings, the NFL pays um, like five thousand dollars a piece for one hundred and fifty rings for the champion every year. So anything over the five thousand dollar per ring mark, the teams have to pick that up themselves. Now, the Patriots last time in 2015 when they won they had rings that were valued at thirty six five a piece. So that's thirty six thousand five hundred dollars per ring. And they said the rings this year are even bigger, featuring two hundred and eighty three diamonds because of their twenty eight to three uh deficit and, and comeback Die! against the Atlanta Falcons. So they don't I don't think the the price for these are published anywhere yet. But we know they cost more than thirty six five. So, you know, that's a hefty gift to give to the president. And Kraft was saying he thought it was something that uh, Donald Trump could eventually put into his presidential library. Um, but the Congressional Research Service says that Trump can c- take a gift like that. Now, with my federal government experience, that was my first question. I was like, well, man, they wouldn't let us take gifts just at little conferences with somebody who's trying to give us a pen that costs $2. But it said he can accept a gift as long as he includes it on his annual financial disclosure report and um, didn't solicit or receive it in exchange for the promise of any official act. So, you know, it can't be, it has to be on the up and up and he has to disclose it. So, you know, people who are really, really, anti-Trump are going to be looking into these disclosures to make sure <laughs> he he puts the uh, the ring um, in his disclosures. But uh, shout out to Jostens. Only reason I'm giving them a shout out because they've been in this business a long time. They made the rings. Yo, they were the same rings. I don't know if you remember back in high school when you were about to graduate and they wanted you to buy a ring. It was always Jostens mm-hmm. trying to get you to, to buy some expensive as corny ring for graduating high school. Uh, never got me, but, <laughs> but shout Neither. out to that. Yeah. No, not, not into that. Not into that. All right. So uh, I see we got some uh, calls on the line. So uh, before we get to those, let me just do some quick birthdays. And of course the birthday shout outs are brought to you by digital extreme technology. Well, for professional, dynamic, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need digital extreme technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence, top quality, results-driven website at incredibly affordable prices, and yes, financing options are available. So visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, if you just want that hookup, just make sure you tell them that the guys from War Room Sports sent you. My birthday! Yay! All right, shout out to uh, the homie Michael Red turns 38. Michael Red, he was an okay shooting guard for a while in the NBA. I think he was known to be better than okay. But I think I always thought he was a little bit overrated. Um, good shooter for a lefty. Uh, moves look kind of awkward, maybe because he was a lefty. But uh, what, what did you think of Michael Red? Did you think he was as good as advertised? Uh, no, certainly not as good as advertised, but I thought he was better than okay. Um, mm-hmm. I think he was a three, three-time three All-Star. Um, and he was part, – part of the hype with Michael Red 
started with the fact that when Ray Allen left the Bucks, I think a year or two after that, they they <laughs> they um, claimed that Michael Red was kind of the heir apparent to uh, Ray Allen's position, and he kind of lived up to some of that hype. Yeah, and so for him NBA living up to some of that, <laughs> to some of that hype, they you know the wave just rode, and I think some folks overreacted and saw, you know, glimmers of the hall of I don't know what, but they started anointing him as being a little better than he was. And I know we had a debate probably probably 10 years ago, who would you rather have, Michael Red or Rip Hamilton? And, of course, our, our Philadelphia, our Pennsylvania. In all actuality, I do think Rip was the better two guard. Than uh, than Michael Red, but Michael Red was good. He was better than OK. He was, he was a good yeah, player. He was a good, I, I mean, good he he could score. He definitely could score. Um, like I said, in mm-hmm. 2004, he was All NBA third team, and that's when he made his All Star team. But those weren't even his best years numbers wise. I mean, and his average went up from that point. Uh, in 0506, he averaged 25.4. 06, 07, he was 26.7, and then it started dropping back off, 22, 21, 11, 4, 8. And I believe some of that was due to knee injuries. Um, but, yeah, 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 you, mean, had yeah. you had a bad – you had a bad feel. Dev, for yeah. me, if you my, – my line in the sand is 18 points. If you score 18 points per game in the, in the National Basketball Association over a season – for his career. That's a, that's a that's a good that's a good player. Nineteen a game. Yeah. That's a that's a good player. You yeah. get up. I mean, you got Hall of Famers who don't who would have an average that. So <laughs> <laughs> you throwing you throwing me a hoop. <laughs> throwing me a hoop. Huh? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> who would you rather sure. have, Joe D or Michael Red? <laughs> uh, Joe D is a legend, man. What you talking about? Um. So shout out to Michael Joe Red on his 38th birthday. Shout out to another uh, shooting two guard, uh, Reggie Miller, who turned 52. Um, and Reggie, getting old. Uh, Kyle Ripken Jr., baseball great, Baltimore Orioles. Uh, he turns 57. Jerry Cooney. You remember Jerry Cooney? Yeah, got knocked out by a lot of people, um, including Muhammad Ali. Uh, he turns 61. And Mike Shanahan, former coach of your Washington professional football team, among other teams. But, you know, just want to needle those guys. Because I know we got some supporters in the Washington area. What up, uh, Washington fans? Uh, Mike Shanahan turned 65 years old. So we like to he got an unfair shake. He got an unfair <laughs> shake. They forced, him to take, they forced him to draft that bum, and he made something happen with it. Yo, and y'all still got rid of him. Forced another yeah. bum on him. All right, so uh, <laughs> uh, we like to give a nice big war room salute to all of these folks on their birthdays. Birthday. Yay! All right, you guys can check out our website at warroomsports.com. While you're there, make sure you take your time to look around, click on the Contact Us tab to send a message about our company, the show, or to inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities to join in the network. For general inquiries, email us, info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, make sure you click the memorabilia tab, buy you some stuff, click the blog tab, read you some articles. Uh, Then you can click the respective icons and tabs to follow all of our social media platforms, to subscribe to our iTunes podcast, to watch our webcast at Warroom Sports TV, to listen to the WRS Podcast Network, and to download our free Warroom Sports mobile app on Android or iOS where you can get everything I just mentioned on the go. Join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room to enter the chat room to sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to create an account, you don't have to. You can sign into your Facebook and Twitter accounts. But while you're at it, click follow. That'll get you updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, the chat room, the War Room Sports Game Time group on the Group Me app. All of that during the show. But if you want to call in and speak with us, the Digital Extreme Technologies Hotline is now open. That number is 
0012, press 1 when prompted. But if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. And I see we have a call on the line right now. We do not have our producer to screen the calls today. So we're just going to have to pick them up raw. Don't say anything crazy, people. Uh, 973, you are in the war room. What's your name? Where you calling oh, from? Oh, good. I used to pick them up raw. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, this is Lou from Jersey. I was about hey, to redial. Lou. How are you? <laughs> okay. Lou. How are you? All, All right. right. What, what's okay. on your mind, Lou? Well, as most of you know, I'm sure you're aware of the, the big fight is Saturday. And yes. Get this. Now, Mayweather says he pre, he projects a knockout to occur. Right. He guarantees. Barnum, Barnum versus oh. Bailey. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Right. <laughs> Regulate. Or Hickory versus oh, Dickory, you know what you want to look at. Well, <laughs> right. But, of course, you didn't say what round. <laughs> right. You well, know, you, you know what? Like, he, yeah. Even his so-called guarantee was kind of, yeah. he, he kind of, it was kind of ambiguous. But, I mean, Floyd Mayweather can only mean one thing. But he just said this yes. fight isn't going to go to distance. I'm sure he's not telling us that Conor's oh, going to knock him not. out. So, so yeah. Basically, he's and saying he's going to get a knockout. So. This guy who's who's Whoa. promising a knockout Sorry. hasn't had, in in what I look to be an official knockout since 2007 with Ricky Hatton. Right. What he did in 2011 with Victor Ortiz, a lot of people think you know that was a bit of a cheap shot. I mean, though it was officially a knockout. Many people don't see it as a knockout. But even if we're going to count that one, like he hasn't had a knockout in six mm-hmm. years, hasn't had a, a real right. knockout in like nine years, and and who knows, you know, Lou, how how many years before some, then? Uh, if there was some way that both of these guys could lose, that's that's what I'm rooting for, and I've I've been uh, praying on it, studying it. If there's a way that they <laughs> can both on. end up with a loss. I'm 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 all for it, man. I'm with it. Three words. Of, three words on that. Me. Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let me ask you a question. Gonna cream, he's gonna he's gonna flip him like a pancake. It's gonna be over before before you can blink your eyes. I mean, because because McGregor has no chance. He's very inexperienced in this part of the sport world. He's a different kind of fighter, and I don't think he can. I don't think he has a, a chance against Mayweather. Not at all. No, no I, I, he, he you're, you're absolutely he right. I heard a Deb, I heard a great analogy. Um, this yes. fight is the equivalent of a distance runner, somebody that runs the 3200 or the steeplechase stepping mm. into the 100 meters and saying, <laughs> I'm going to beat Tyson Gay or I'm going to beat Justin Gatling or, or Justin Gatling or Usain Bolt going up to the 3,200 saying that they're going to beat Mo Farah. Like, yes. it can't it, – it's, yeah, it's both running. You're both running, but it's, that's, the, that's the extent of where it's similar. Everything yeah, it's else is completely different. different type of running like they do a completely different right. type of fighting. I mean, he, he's a combat sport professional. He throws punches for a living as well, but it's, it's just different from the sweet science. Lou, let me ask you. Um, do you yes. agree or do you believe Floyd when he says he's going to get a knockout? Well, it's nothing I haven't heard before. I mean, I've heard guarantees before. Some have come right. true, some have But you know what? This, I mean, with Mayweather's experience and, you know, McGregor's so inexperienced, it's it's bound to be a mismatch. And I think it's going to be over within the within 90 seconds of the first round. So if I were you, I wouldn't go to the refrigerator. I wouldn't even get to go to the bathroom because if you do, you're going to miss it. Well, one more question before you before yeah. you go. We heard this in our in our circle, and I think a lot of people saying it was dead serious. Um, even outside of our circle, I think Max Kellerman said it too, but I don't know if it was hyperbole or he, or or, or maybe he was dead serious because he seemed to be a little serious. There's a contingency, there's a contingent of folks out there who thinks he won't even land a punch on Floyd Mayweather, at least not a clean punch. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Not a punch at all, or just not a clean punch, clean hard punch. No, well, okay, not not a clean punch. I mean, right. okay. the only way McGregor's going to get you know, is, is you know to fight dirty because what's the what's the old saying? When fighting don't work, fight dirty, and that's that's going to be trying to be his plan. 
Of course, it'll backfire. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else on your mind before we let you go? I just got some word about um. Well, this is uh, really to basketball, but uh, Mono Ginobili mm-hmm. has re-signed with the Spurs for two years. I'm not surprised okay. though at all. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were going. You know, they they want Manu to retire a Spur. Now they're just hoping he retires within this two years. All right, but uh, Lou, we appreciate your call as usual. Man. And that championship. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hopefully we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Yo, why Manu won't go home, man? <laughs> uh, yeah, we 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 actually had the. Of course, we had the fight on the on the docket. But before we get to that, get back into that and the rest of these hot topics, uh, just gotta let you guys know hot topics are brought to you by Sports the Book. You tired of reading the same old sports book with the same tired old sports lists, rankings, imaginary starting lineups, and and all sorts of subjective information being passed off as facts? Well, be sure to pick up your copy of Sports. Smart people only read the sports. It's it's mixture of sports and hip-hop culture to keep you on the edge of your seat and laughing like you were watching a comedy special. So just go to sportsthebook.com or get your copy from our website at warroomsports.com. Wherever you get it, just make Man, sure if you're you tired, don't if you're tired miss of, this movement. If you're tired of sports, <laughs> if you're tired of sports altogether, uh, the book is still even great. I don't see how you could be tired of sports, but you know, it's still one of the greatest reads ever in the history of books. So pick that up. All right. Um. Yeah. Just back to 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 your thoughts on this boxing match since we already went down that path. Um. I know you're not one of the believers that the dude is not going to land a punch. I just think that's ridiculous. I think that whole notion is ridiculous. Um, not with Lou said, because Lou said a clean punch. Now, I think there's a chance in that. I've seen better boxers, even though Floyd was a little bit younger. I've seen better boxers not get a clean punch off on Floyd Mayweather. Um, that's why a lot of his performances, and it's, and it's not even his performance, just a lot of his bouts are – they just don't live up to the hype because he's so defensive. Like the fight really never gets going because you just can't touch the dude. And if you do touch the dude, you can't touch him clean. So it's, it's um, but he's promising a knockout. How much stock do you put in that? Or is this just more words to sell the fight uh, that they're charging a hundred dollars a head, a hundred dollars for pay-per-view for, for high deaths and nobody watches anything so, standard definition anymore. <laughs> I just need to share this right now with our listeners, share this with you, not that you haven't heard it before. So I hate Floyd Mayweather so much, man. <laughs> like, I, 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 I hate dude. Like, and and here's train. why this is, this, is per, this is pertinent. I'm not going to get into the fact that he beats women and he's had five cases um, from 2000. I'm not even going to get into who, how, who he is as a man and as a human being. If you are the greatest, think of everyone that you consider to be a great. They don't have to be the greatest. They don't have to even be top five, top ten. But wherever that line is that you draw and say the guys on the other side of this line are great. If it's in basketball, if it's in baseball, if it's in boxing, we'll make it boxing. Do you think for one second, that Muhammad Ali would have fought Mr. T. <laughs> so that's what the, the equivalent of, of this is. The equivalent. Of yeah, this is this is this is dis, it's disrespectful to the sport. It's disrespectful to the sweet science. It's disrespect, and I hold I hold Floyd accountable for this. I and, and Leonard Ellerby and Al Heyman. I don't hold Connor responsible. Outside of the, you know, the racism and the white supremacy, ring my bell, and and that, you know, and that type of stuff. I mean, that's that that's a gift. They're they're trying to sell. He's trying to sell and promote a fight, and it's wrong. It's it, it bottom line, it's wrong. But it's America. Yeah, I mean, I no you one. Said. So you're saying this take is a hundred million dollars. No one will take. No one will turn a hundred million dollars. Saying this is equivalent to Rocky fighting Hulk Hogan, aka Thunderlips, in Rocky Three. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, but at least they build that as a charity event or, or something like that. This is like they're trying to be dead serious with this. They went on this world tour, you know, to promote this fight. Uh, even took it to levels of racism, which I really don't think Floyd minds because it sells the fight. Um, I think they even got Pauly, Magli, Matt, I can never say his name, Pauly M involved in the whole thing because it seems like this man cannot get out of his feelings about the sparring match, you know, the, the, the leaked video from the sparring match between he and Connor. He just basically took over a Conor McGregor, not, not a not a press conference, but it was just like, you know, a little media rush outside in Vegas where the media is surrounding Conor McGregor. And then Paulie comes in trying to be seen and makes himself the story while the whole time in the microphone saying, I'm not trying to make myself the story. But but you are because you're walking down the street now, three minutes later, after you interrupted with at least six media the members around you and you're not even fighting. So it's like they're doing everything they can to promote this fight. They're getting outside entities to put themselves in it to promote the fight. I, I have a feeling it's going to make a lot of money, even though we talked about how at, at this time last week, there were plenty of tickets left and they were already going onto the secondary market. Um, I just can't, I can't see myself, man. If I was the biggest boxing head in the world, I can't pay a hundred dollars to see this, man. I'm I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm not curious. Like I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I got to see, I got to see it for free or, or I'm just not going to see it. So oh, um, I'm a watch anybody I'm having that party, you want to invite your boy war room dev over, I'll bring a pizza, but that's about all I got to spend on Floyd and Connor. <laughs> So what's your prediction, B? Bang. Um, <laughs> I have to predict this. I guess I have. Yeah. Um, you, you going with the knockout? You going with Floyd in the knockout? Nah. I'm going. I'm going with Floyd in eight because Connor is going to revert to MMA tactics by that stage of the fight and get frustrated (laughs) with Floyd running around the ring and running away from him, and he's either going to kick, shoot, slam him, or do something MMA-ish, and it's going to be a disqualification, and Floyd's going to, you know, ride off into the sunset with another $300 Connor's going to make his $100 In real boxing matches? We can never really predict disqualifications, but I think if there's a fight to predict the disqualification, this would be it. You know, either this or like Tyson versus Holyfield <laughs> three, if they had it. You know what I mean? But um, if there was any fight that you can pretty much pretty much predict the disqualification, this would be it. I'm gonna go with the usual Floyd and uh, and twelve Floyd. Uh, it's going to go to distance. Um, it's probably going to be pretty much uneventful, it's, except for the moments where they get tied up and Connor does some dirty things during the tie-ups. That, that's my prediction. I don't know if he's going to do enough to get disqualified, but I really wouldn't put it past him getting disqualified, like you said. So I'm going to just say it's going to go to distance, uh, Floyd in the decision. Um, yeah, has to be a free watch, though has to be a free watch. All right, let's talk about the biggest... All of the... the, the enti- okay. Oh, hold on. The entire boxing community on the low is insulted. Everybody who, from Sugar Ray Leonard to Sugar Oscar. Tank Shane representing Atlanta's community, <laughs> Oscar, um, everybody, all Chop Chop Corley, all of your accomplished boxers, you can tell by their analysis that it's not that they're defending Floyd. They're defending the honor of a sport that they gave their lives to. And for them to say anything other than Floyd is disrespectful to the sport. My problem is everyone other than Oscar stopped short of disrespecting Floyd for disrespecting the sport. Like, everybody 
everybody is so enamored by the purse and the fact that he's able to pull three hundred million down that they just they fall short of the fact that this guy has decided like Floyd's gonna get in the ring and fight a tree or he's gonna get in the ring and fight a bush. Like they don't want to diss Floyd because well he's getting three hundred million to fight bushes. a tree. Been fighting bushes though. He's talking about he been he been taking he been taking the bush for a long time, but that's neither here nor there. Um I, I my thing is if they wanna if they're gonna call it out they have to call it all the way out. This is as a result of Ellerby, Heyman, and Mayweather getting together and not caring about the sport. It just can't, yo, we can make a whole lot of money, so we might as well do it. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's an argument against that. If it is, somebody call in and, and give it to us, 323-410-0012. If you don't think this fight is making a mockery of boxing and you think it's it's legitimate, let us know. I mean, because we pretty much think it's all about straight cash, homie. <laughs> and, Michael and Jordan wouldn't more, play the best and one player in the world. <laughs> he might come out of retirement and play um Levar Ball. <laughs> Psych. All right, let's talk about the biggest sports. Story of the week, man. No more beating around this bush. Uh, the Cavaliers and Celtics laid down a blockbuster trade and basically swapped their star point guards. Um, Boston is getting Kyrie Irving, and the Cavaliers are getting Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jay Crowder, and center Ante Zizek. And the Brooklyn Nets unprotected 2018 first round pick. Now, I come on this show every week when we talk about trades and I preach because, you know, fans are always the minute a trade is made. They're like, oh, who got the better of the trade? Who won the trade? That's, you know, wins and losses in the trade. Who won the trade? Everybody won. But listen, but listen, for me, my theory is always, you know, it's really not about wins and losses because different teams need different things. So you have to bring context to the trade. Like everybody would say, remember, remember back, everybody would say the Lakers fleeced um, the Grizzlies and, and got Paul Gasol and that's how they won a championship. Well, that wasn't a fleecing in the least bit. The Grizzlies did what they did to improve their team. It may have taken a minute because they took, they took on assets, you know what I'm saying? They took on young players, um, picks, and stuff like that. The Lakers and the Grizzlies were in two different spots at the time. The Grizzlies were a bad team trying to get rid of the only tradable asset they had in order to build the team for the future. They never won a championship from the trade, but that trade damn sure made the Grizzlies uh, at least a contender for a, a decade you know, once all of those players came of age and, and things of that nature. Now, the Lakers were in a, a, a whole different position where they only needed one more piece to their championship puzzle. So a lot of people went and judged that trade off. Well, look, they gave him, they gave them power and they won the championship. What did the Grizzlies do, you know, the year after? And that's not how you judge trades. But I will admit in this particular situation, when it's, the number one and the number two team, you pick which one is number one and number two. I mean, Boston was number one on paper, but, you know, everybody knows who the number one team in the Eastern Conference is. But when the number one team and the number two team in the same conference are making a trade, and these are the two teams that are expected to meet in the conference finals, then you, I think this is one of the rare situations where you can judge all right, who won this trade? Who won the you know who got the better of this trade? Because these teams most likely will get a chance to show you, you know, head to head in a playoff scenario of who got the better of the trade because they just finished playing in the Eastern Conference Finals against each other. So all my preaching kind of goes out of the window on this one. What did you think about the trade? Be like, uh, who do you think if 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 you're even judging it that way? Who got the better of this this deal? Um, the Boston Celtics, because 
they have set themselves up for the future, and there's an opportunity to sign a top 10 player just entering his prime at 25 for the foreseeable future. Pair him with Gordon Hayward, um, who's a very good perimeter player perimeter player, particularly score. Um, not great, not great, but very, very good. And there's still cap room and the opportunity to go after more assets and more pieces to be able to compete. Um, I actually look at this as both teams winning because I look at this trade exactly the way that you look at trades normally Everybody got what they needed out of it. Now, I still don't think Isaiah Thomas and Jay Crowder and the other big gentlemen equal the Cavs getting better. They're a little worse, actually. They're a little worse. But they still have a team that's able to compete for the, the first seed in the East. You know, that, that's what they're re- these guys are really playing for. Everybody's playing for the opportunity to lose to the, the Ducks, the Warriors. And I feel like if Isaiah Thomas, he's not going to score 28 a game, you know, playing running with LeBron. But if he can prove to play off the ball a little bit, I think you're going to see him produce in the low 20s. And that's, you know, that's very, very good. Now the question is, defensively, if you look at a scale of 10 down to negative 10, Isaiah Thomas' defensive contributions is at about a negative 3, and Kyrie's is at about a 2. So they got worse defensively, but people are going to say, well, you can Jay Crowder can make up for that. So, yeah, you can run with Jay Crowder because he's a very good spot-up shooter, so you can have him on the floor at the same time with uh, – LeBron and and Isaiah, I think this yeah. is a, I think this is the win win, man. Yeah, Jay Crowder makes Thank their you. small ball lineups a little better than they were last season. I mean, he's not going to start. Yeah. He plays the same position as LeBron, so he's not not going to start. But like you said, he can run on the court at the same time with LeBron because LeBron is pretty much interchangeable from the one to the four, maybe. You know what I'm saying? So, um. I, it, it's difficult because Kyrie, you know, he, he's obviously the best player in this trade. But judging the trade, I, I also have to judge some of the moves that the Celtics had already made. Um, they finally let go of their Kung Fu grip on, you know, that Nets pick. So what I think Cleveland did besides – being viable for this one last year that you have LeBron for sure. You know, I, I, I still think they're good for that for next Shut year because, because of the depth that the depth and the toughness that Crowder is going to give you. Um, I don't think Isaiah Thomas is the same player as Kyrie Irving, but he's going to give you, you know, he's going to give you something. It's not going to be that much of a drop off. We'll see if he can end up being the same type of clutch player that Kyrie was, because that's kind of what LeBron needs running next to him. So I think Cleveland is is still the favorite in the, the conference. Um, I still think they're going to win the conference. But if you look at the fact that the Celtics, even though they picked up Kyrie, even though they picked up um, Hayward, it came at the expense basically of their two toughest players and Jay Crowder and Avery, Avery Bradley. Like, those are going to be losses. Like, I know basketball purists, purists are noticing those losses, but a lot of fans, they just see the names, and they think it's cool. But I think losing those two guys You're is saying they hurt lost, the Celtics. They lost their perimeter defenders. They lost their heart and soul, basically. Yeah, these are the guys, these are the guys that made it possible to hide Isaiah Thomas on the defensive end. I mean, Cleveland has a good enough team to do that as well because they had to do the same thing with Kyrie to a lesser extent. Um, So, yeah, Isaiah Thomas over to Cleveland is just going to make everybody else on the team have to step it up that much more defensively. But he can handle a a good portion of the scoring load along with LeBron. They're still talking this buyout in Chicago that would allow Dwayne Wade to, you know, forget all his pride and integrity and move 
to the to the Cavaliers as well. Um, we still don't know what's going to happen with Melo, if anything. So they may not be done, but as it stands right now, I still have Cleveland's being the favorite, basically, because they still have LeBron James. But like you said, Boston did well. I agree with that. As far as the future goes, because Kyrie's contract isn't up yet. Um, and from all accounts, they say he, he may be okay with staying in Boston, so they have a chance to re-sign him. But let me tell you how Cleveland looked out for their future as well. Because they're unsure about LeBron James, I think that's why they probably forced Danny Ainge to throw in that, that unprotected picks pick from the Brooklyn Nets. Because if you lose LeBron James and you, you lose Isaiah Thomas, which is a possibility after next year, I mean, because this is obviously a move oh, yeah, where he's Cavs, gone. He's gone. Cavs are just going for he's it gone. because this may be their last opportunity to go for it. They're going for it. So they got two stars that are in the last year of their deals who may leave, but they did pick up that pick that could be damn near the number one pick in the draft. So at least, you know, their rebuild can start right away around what could amount to a very good player. So I think you know, Cleveland looked funny, out for themselves in that, in that regard. I think they're renting. I think they're renting Isaiah Thomas. His salary going to rent anybody they picked up this year. Six, who's going to resign? Six million a year. My man Isaiah Thomas wants two hundred million. He wants the max. Yeah. Cleveland's not, that Cleveland's not giving him. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland's not paying. Pay I mean, I think guys that can't do anything that is a little bit silly. And I'm a fan so, of the dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't pay a guy. You can't pay a guy two hundred million if he can only do one thing. Like he can only do one thing. There's nothing else that Isaiah Thomas does on a basketball court other than score. So I can't give you two hundred million for that. So, so let, tell me, B. Even with the, the names that they have on the squad now, like, because I'm really concerned about this. These guys aren't all stars. Avery Bradley and, and Jay Crowder. But do you think with the sub- subtraction of these dudes, do you think Boston can still challenge for the one or two spot in this conference? Or do you think, you know, it's going to be Kyrie, uh, Gordon, and, and the young guys, Jalen Brown, um, and, and and the guy that just picked up in the draft. I don't know why I'm having a brain fart. But um, Tatum, Tatum do you think uh, – you think they can still challenge to be the one seed or the two seed? Or is there going to be some stiff challengers for that? In the East, not yeah. that they can challenge for it. I also don't think that Danny Ainge is done. I don't I don't think he's done. I think at this point, you well, go got so out many assets, and you scour, shouldn't be done. You scour the earth for a three and D guy. You're scouring the earth right now for someone you can pay Six mil, seven mil a year, who can give you 15 points a game, or close to two steals, and shoot over 37 uh, percent from three. You're scouring the earth for that. So, you know, I, I don't think they're done. I think they're going to add someone that they feel is comparable to a Jay Crowder or an Avery Bradley, yeah. if not both. Uh, now guess who you? Is, guess who you just Biden. described, though. Guess who you just described? Avery freaking Bradley. (laughs) Yeah. You just described Avery Bradley. Like, so it's like, what the hell? Like, you just described Avery Bradley, literally. Let me see what his, what his numbers were. What did Avery Bradley sign? What did he sign for? Um, for? Well, he got traded to the Pistons. I think his deal is coming up. That's why they, because he's only making like eight, something 8.8 or something like that this season that's why I said you like described him you said somebody they can get for around 7 million um average you said 15 points and 39 from three he averaged this last season 16.3 points and he shot 39 percent from the three-point line and you know about his defense yeah so it's like they're looking yeah. for what they need is what they just gave up so I think they they feel they but they had to to make that Gordon con- that make that Gordon contract work. Gordon, they, they had right. to get rid of him. Right. They can so, find. I don't know. I think they believe. I don't, they have to find him for cheaper though. 
they have to find him for cheaper because like I said, the reason he had to go was to make the Gordon Hayward contract work in the first place. Steven so, Jackson so we'll is see. available. <laughs> Ice Cube ain't trying to hear that right now, cuz. <laughs> big three. Listen, and shout out to the big three. Their championship game is this Saturday in Vegas as well. Um, trilogy versus I'm tripping. I was just watching it earlier. Um was it three headed monster? I think it's trilogy versus three headed monster. I know trilogy's undefeated. I don't know. Um who on trilogy? Your man, oh, man Al Harrington trying to get back Al in the Harrington, league. Rashad McCants, Kenyon Martin, coached by Rick Mahorn. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Al Harrington's this. official name. Al Your man James White name is Al who made us look silly Al in Harrington, that dunk who couldn't shoot. <laughs> mm-hmm. Al Harrington trying to get back in the league is his actual birth certificate name. Mm-hmm. He he don't look like it as far as his body is concerned, but he down there punishing them dudes in the big three. Um, one another thing about this this trade uh, fan reaction. There was actually a video of a Celtics fan burning Isaiah Thomas's jersey. Um, did I miss something? Like, is there any no, reason I for hate, any Celtics I, fan to be I upset? Hate with Isaiah Thomas right now? Can you explain that, B? Yo, it is Boston. And Boston has a long history of being a sister <laughs> city to Charlottesville. But listen, this dude, I mean, we talk about loyalty in sports, which I don't think there is any. Um, and that's usually between the organization and the players as well. But, you know, fans, fans are always the ones preaching that loyalty but then stuff like this happens. Like, that man didn't ask to be traded. I mean, he asked for a Brinks truck, but he didn't ask to be traded. He didn't say he wanted out or anything like that. This dude had the most tragic moment of his life when he lost his little sister during the playoffs, and he came to work the next day and and, 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 and balled out, you know, crying in between every possession and, and every time out. And he gets traded from the team. For one, you know, it's a show of disloyalty. But for me, that never bothers me. This is a business. I mean, even from the player side, it's a business. Like, if you ever notice the stuff that we can play, because I know it's people out there screaming right now, well, that's not what y'all be saying when y'all be calling people cowards. In situations where, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's situational. When we criticize somebody like that, like Durant going to, Durant can do anything he want to do when he's a free agent. But Durant going to a 73-9 and nine team that just beat him, that's cowardly. LeBron winning 61 games with his team and, and losing in the playoffs and then calling up Bosh and Wade and having a summit and getting together, that's cowardly on all three of their parts. I, I didn't say they couldn't do it. I, I didn't say, you know, these players can't take their, their careers into their own hands, but some of this stuff is cowardly. But fans always preach that loyalty stuff. And then when a guy gets traded, who probably wanted to be there, had the best season of his career, like I said, came to work after his sister was killed in an accident the day before, you burn his jersey? Like, what kind of idiot does that? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> a tiki, a tiki, a tiki torch carrier. <laughs> All right, man, but I I think that fan and anybody else who felt that way about uh, Isaiah Thomas being traded, um, I pretty much think that they deserve one of these. Get a life, homie. All right, so our um, stat of the week, man, we're going to take it to baseball real quick. Uh, Josh Harrison of the Pirates hit a 10th inning walk-off homer to end the no-hitter bid for Dodgers lefty Rich Hill, becoming the first player in Major League history to accomplish this feat. So let me, let me put this in perspective. <laughs> this dude... It's not a it's not a perfect game because there was an error in one of the innings um that got somebody on base. But um 
this pitcher is working with a no hitter through all the way through nine innings. It goes into extra innings. So in the tenth inning, um, Hill threw his fourth pitch of the inning, which was a fastball down the middle. Josh Harrison absolutely smashed it into the left field seats. So Hill ended his night with giving up one hit, one run, and one loss. So he he played the game of his life, ended up getting a loss on his record with only one hit. He gave up one damn hit, B. And Harrison became the first player, like I said, in Major League history to end a pitcher's no-hit bid with a walk-off home run. (laughs) That's crazy, man. Nobody can touch you through nine innings. You go into extras. You throw four pitches in an inning, and dude just lets one fly. It's it's just so weird to look on the, the score sheet and see that you got a loss tacked on your record, but you only gave up one hit the whole game. <laughs> one hit, one run. Based on one loss. Based on uh, my level of competitiveness and possibly uh, some flaws in my character, uh, if I was that pitcher, I'd have been trying to see that dude about something. I might have hit him <laughs> as he was rounding the bases. I might have. <laughs> Oh, but that's just so you, I'm not saying that that's right. I feel you. So you'd have been on your your sore loser, Joan, like George Foreman said about Colin Kaepernick, Kevin Durant, and anybody else who's protesting the president of the United States. <laughs> and anybody out there, if you don't know Uh-oh. what I'm talking about, big George Foreman uh, said this about these players and anybody else who's protesting the national anthem or our president on a conservative radio show earlier in the week. Uh, let me see if I can pull up some of his quotes. Um, yes. This shouldn't be a surprise. So like when, when I put this into a few of the groups that we talk in, people were like, oh, we got us another one. But I'm Muhammad Ali told y'all this 40 years ago. Like, so I don't know why y'all, y'all anybody... Thought- Y'all thought that Muhammad Ali was just playing. Y'all thought he was just making fun of George. Yeah, no, he, he told y'all what George was knew. a long time ago. So, um, yeah, it's not really cause for surprise here. So uh, let me go back. Let me see if I can grab one of his quotes from that particular. I, I actually listened to the podcast. Um, I fast forwarded to where George came in. He only came in like the last 10 minutes of the show. But he went right in on everybody. The the poc the podcast they were, is called they Offended were, America. They were specifically, it's called Offended they were specifically America. Specifically looking for uh, okay. specifically. I was saying for, they were specifically looking for an African American that would paint his face white mm. and come on and feed into their narrative, and they found George. <laughs> well, he he's the like I said the the podcast is called Offended America. Um, he he said that he doesn't pay much attention to what kids do, and he indicated that he believed the anthem protests were merely a cry for attention. He said, quote, I got all this money, but nobody knows me, um, so let me say something like Muhammad Ali, and maybe I'll be different. That's all that is. But like, really? No one knows Colin Kaepernick? Like, you really think that this is a cry for attention? Like, come on, dude. And the whole thing where they asked him about Kevin Durant and the fact that Kevin Durant said if they were invited, he wouldn't go to the White House um, to meet Donald Trump. So that's when he said, you know, these guys are sore losers. But that really did, didn't make sense because you get invited to the White House because you won. <laughs> so I really didn't get what George was saying. There. No, it like made a little sense. CTN, no, it made CT, sense. CTE it made, kicking in. It made sense. It made sense, right. man. Y'all not y'all yeah. not looking at it the proper way. George is well, telling you, listen, black people have lost here unless you got the type of money I have. Y'all right. lost already. Except so like a hundred million grills. Um, so the concept of patriotism among athletes came up. Uh remember he you know, he, he had the little flag in the, in the ring with him during the 1968 Olympics. And he proudly stated, I still love this country. The greatest day of my life was when I put on the colors, red, white, and blue. 
Like not when his kids were born, not when he married his whiz. The greatest day of his life is when he put those colors on. He also suggested, like I said earlier, that any protests may not have been brought up in patriotic homes and deemed that athletes who decline to visit the White House, like Kevin Durant, are sore losers. Um, he also spoke about Muhammad Ali. Uh, he said the shame part of it, all of us, including Joe Frazier and myself, we became the heavyweight champion of the world. We didn't realize that just because you're a champ, you don't become Muhammad Ali. So I, I don't know what the hell George was talking about, but basically, <laughs> basically, anyone who protests the presidency is a sore loser. So I guess when he meant sore loser, I guess he meant if you were on the other side, if you voted against Donald Trump, you're a sore loser, so you're going to protest against him because he can't mean a sore loser in the athletic stage because you only get invited to the White House if you want. So that's George Foreman doing what George Foreman does. You got any thoughts on this, B? <clears throat> um, man, I've just been interjecting as I as I can. It it really is amazing and boggles me the number of house Negroes that still live outside the bounds of, of of actual chattel slavery. Like the house Negroes are a real problem here in America in 2017. They're a real issue. Like George Foreman have no shame. The only th- the only thing I can think of in listening to him was when uh, King Leonidas, you know, it was mentioned in uh, 300 that, uh, you know, may you live forever because a coward, a coward never dies. And a hero such as Muhammad Ali dies a hero and remains a hero while you live on still spouting forth this filth out of your mouth. Man, <laughs> George Foreman, everybody. A coward died. <laughs> All right, well, well, speaking of uh, anthem protesters being cowards and sore losers and, and wanting attention, um, remember we talked about Hugh Jackson, head coach of the, the Browns. We talked about how his, you know, he, he was saying last week, he doesn't think any of his guys would do that. He said he didn't know for sure, but he think he knows his guys. And the anthem means this to him. It means so much. And he just would hope that they wouldn't do that in Cleveland. Well, <laughs> during the Monday night preseason game against the New York G-men, the Cleveland Browns players actually displayed the largest anthem protest yet with 12 players kneeling and praying together while the anthem was on. I think mostly black players, but they were like two white players standing behind the, the, the guys kneeling, basically putting their hands on their shoulders in a show of solidarity. Um, all I can say is, wow, you know, because their coach just went on TV less than a week before and said everything he said, prompting people like B. Austin and Shannon Sharp to absolutely go in on them (laughs) on their perspective shows. And this is what happens. I pretty much think his comments motivated them because you can look at that several ways. If you're one of the players, like he's saying, I know my players and I don't think they would do that. You, you're either one calling me a coward (laughs) or a coon or, you know, several other things that you, you can get out of that. But but your coach is telling you, basically, I know that my guys won't do this, and it means more to us, and we can handle things and talk about things in-house. And then they completely showed their coach up. What did you think when you saw those 10 to 12 guys kneeling during the National Anthem? My, um, my heart swelled with pride and support for them, both black and white for taking that step, um, you know, and I, I might have been cutting some onions at that time, man. It was a beautiful sight to see them not only take that step, um, you know, not only take that step towards what this is all about, 
but to incorporate a higher power into that and to kneel and pray. I mean, there's really nothing that you can say to that, even those that would claim that, well, it's unpatriotic. Everybody I hear that 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 <laughs> that is on that side of the issue typically touts how Christian a nation that we live in, and what's more, uh, what's more humble, what's more Christian, what's more you know beautiful than taking a knee before God because God comes before all. So I yeah I, I respect well be and um, to answer your question. When you say, what can you say to that? An Ohio Supreme Court justice and Vietnam veteran, Bill O'Neill, he said plenty about it. He wrote on his Facebook page, congratulations, Cleveland Browns, on your win. Unfortunately, my season ended last night. I will never attend a sporting sporting event where the draft-dodging millionaire athletes disrespect the veterans who earned them the right to be on that field. Shame on you all, William O'Neill. Lieutenant U.S. Army, retired Vietnam veteran, son of a World War II veteran, proud father of an Iraq veteran. What draft? What the hell did that draft have to dodging. do with the veterans? Where did, he, where did he people get this stuff? But you know the scary part about this, B? These are Supreme Court justices. These are people in high places who feel this way. So it's like as much change as people want to think has happened in America, you look at the people in power and they still have these primitive, savage mindsets and it just makes it scary. He has the power to <laughs> to basically make decisions that affect your life. So piss him off if you want to, I guess is what they're saying. So, so he's saying uh. his season ended last night because some people kneeled and prayed together. Instead of stood up for it. Instead of stood up for an anthem that celebrates, you know, keeping their ancestors captive and telling you that you'll never get away, (laughs) we'll we'll drown the streets with your blood if you try to run. Like, come on, read the song. Because by now we've told you enough times. It's it's out there enough to read the lyrics to the song. Let's stop cutting off the, the, the rest of the song and acting like, okay, since we don't sing that part, that it doesn't exist. Like, come on. How do, how do you keep condemning people for not wanting to stand up for this song and, and doing something as honorable as praying instead? B, I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. When I asked that, I was... Uh... That was a rhetorical question. I didn't know there was really an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Supreme Court an judge. And then uh, I guess when they when he heard those comments, Browns linebacker Christian Kirksey told Fox 8 on Tuesday, he said, respect to all the veterans, respect to the military. We are not protesting against them. We have our reasons for doing what we did. And last night felt like the right time to do it. And that's why we did it. Um it's crazy, man. All this is happening, you know, while the NAACP is requesting a meeting with Commissioner Goodell to discuss why Colin Kaepernick hasn't been signed by an NFL team. And they said that rally that um, uh, the homie, the mayor, called in and said he was going to be a part of last week. And also shout out to um, some 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 more cats that we know who went down to New York, went up to New York, excuse me. Uh, to be a part of the the rally. They said over a thousand people attended the rally in front of NFL headquarters in Midtown Manhattan. So shout out to the hundreds, if not the thousand people who went out there to to have their voices heard in this, this, uh, this situation, uh, the blueprint in the building, what up blueprint, uh, but uh, salute to to Chris Long too, man. Salute to Chris Long. He's been very vocal. Yeah. 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 It's just it's it's crazy, man. It's, it's, it's crazy to see how people feel, man. This is a Supreme Court judge. And because some people knelt and prayed before a football game, he's upset about it. And um, also shout out to the homie Ronald Glover from uh, the starting five. I think he, he went up to New York and was a part of the uh, the rally as well. 
So shout out to him. He's always about that business. Um, it's crazy, man. Hey, Jim, you got any thoughts on this Supreme Court judge in Ohio who had a problem with the Cleveland Browns kneeling and praying with each, with each other during the anthem on Monday night? I don't know. Maybe Jim having mic problems. He probably uh, think he's talking again. Not really. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. Well, <laughs> let us know when you get 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 everything straightened out. Um, I feel like I feel like Blueprint felt so strongly that he doesn't want to get us censored. So that's what that is. That's all. Yeah. Speaking of that game, I, I definitely had to ask y'all about this moment in the game. Did you see the moment in the game where your boy Odell Beckham got hit? Um and apparently injured his ankle, but did you, did you did you see that first of all? Uh yeah, or any I saw the replay. Or anything? Yep. Yo, yes sir. Yes, did sir. you see the dramatics? Like the dude is trying to win an Oscar. I'm not saying like I'm not going to judge the hit. I mean it didn't look like it was as bad as what he made it seem, but he got hit. He fell down. He laid there for a minute. He got up. He walked, he limped a little bit, he collapsed, put his head on the ground, went back in the tunnel, collapsed again, and then, you know, he found out it was an ankle sprain, not even a high ankle sprain. Um, <laughs> he's probably Yo. done for the for the preseason, and now they're saying there's a chance that he can miss week one against the Cowboys, and I'm telling you that there's no chance. Not, no way. I'm telling you no, that it was all no, a ploy. Well, yeah. To, to not have to go out there in the preseason again. Here's the thing. There's two things that these young boys trade in. They trade in, in money and attention. And as, you know, the great fabulous has said, attention has trumped money at this point. The hit was dirty. The hit was dirty. It definitely was dirty. But the result, like, it, it wasn't – he knew the cameras were, were on him. Right. He didn't get destroyed the like the dude was much trying much. to do to him. <laughs> Yo, here, here's my perspective, right? Because I actually saw the hit. Y'all guys know I ain't watching no football, but I saw that because I ain't giving up social media. Um, I ain't that woke. But uh, so I saw it on. Um, I saw the hit and I saw his reaction, and it reminded me of Paul Pierce right from the gate. That's the first thing that came to mind. It was very, it was very Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce still, Paul Pierce still holds the belt. Um, for being the most over dramatic, but he came close Hell with man. all the antics like after he got off the field. That was a bit much. And I agree. B. Austin actually stole my point. Attention is attention is the new thing, man. And he's actually great at it. He is the like walking billboard for as uh the homie Phil Mack would say for new Aggins. Like he does everything that they do in terms in terms of his like his um off the field, the way he carries himself, his his his, his uh infatuation with social media. Um, how he gets attention on the field. Like, he's the poster boy for New Aggins, and that was like a New Aggin behavior right there. And it was a bit much. He still didn't trump Paul Pierce yet. No one has trumped Paul Pierce wow. yet. He's had the best of the year. Jim, I don't think anybody has the heart to try to go as hard as Paul Pierce did. I, they were like, man, I can't. That was legendary. Like, initially, was, I hated Paul great. Pierce for that. Yo, that was the great. Like, here's the thing. That initially, I hated Paul Pierce for that, but as time goes on, I start to actually like it because it was so drawn that it's like I can't help but to laugh at that. Like, yo, you're drawn. But you know what, Jim? You know what? 30 years from now, that's going to be the new Willis Reed. You you know, because I forgot all about the fact that that was game one of the NBA finals. So because it was the finals, that in 30 years from now, that's going to be the new Willis Reed. Because personally, I think the Willis Reed uh, situation is way overrated. But but shout out to Paul, Willis. Paul, Paul Pierce didn't and got his forget that it was game one. <laughs> Paul Pierce didn't Yo, what, said, Willis I Reed drew no, and didn't walk Clyde Frazier, took over. And he gets no props for it, though. <laughs> he gets Yo, no Clyde, props for Clyde it. Had, Clyde had the game of his life after Willis Reed drew. Yeah, it's all about Cap coming out the, you know, Captain coming out the, the um, tunnel, limping, jumping, jump, you know, so, jumping to and getting his two him. points and rolling out. New Ag New Aggins are androgynous. Uh they have pocketbooks. I'm, I'm almost convinced. I'm convinced that dude takes a shower before the game and puts on baby powder, lotion and, and 
perfume before he goes out to play. He gets his hair done. Yo, new Atkins, man. New Atkins. Salute to you, Phil. (laughs) Yeah, it it was crazy. It was mad dramatic, but, you know, we kind of expect that from Odell. The hit was dirty. Because Odell. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he tried to he, he tried to take his, his legs out, you know, he tried to take it out. So I'm, I'm not even disputing the hit, but you know, the drama, it was hilarious. It was definitely hilarious. But they're saying it's not out of the question that he could miss a week or two of the regular season, and I call BS on that. Pretty much, no way he's gonna miss a week or two of the regular season. All right, so um, yo, by the way, real quick, home, real quick though, oh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. by the way, real quick, in that game that Willis Reed had like two, three points. Yo, my man Walt Frazier had uh, thirty six yeah, points like and nineteen assists. Yeah, he got like nineteen points. And, and then and then he assisted on every other bucket the team had. <laughs> yeah, he had nineteen <laughs> assists and thirty six points. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's crazy. But let's go to the phone lines real quick because we got the homie, uh, Tobias calling in. From out on the West Coast, Tobias, what's going on, good brother? Roll damn time. Let you know, I did not go to the riot, I mean, uh, rally the other night. I stayed at home. Uh, nor did I have, nor did I put, nor did I become LaShawn McCoy and wear one of those shirts those, uh, Coons was wearing. Uh, but, uh, shout out LaShawn McCoy, who said Colin Kaepernick, Yo, it, how, this play. How disappointing. How disappointing. Is LaShawn McCoy, man? How disappointing is this? Man? Damn! But here's the here's the thing: Tyrod Taylor he's is his quarterback. It's not like he's playing with Aaron Rodgers here. He's clean. Yeah. Gosh, it, 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 it shows how scared these guys are, and it just shows. And that's the sad part about it. Next thing you know, I, mean, I expect LaShawn McCoy to go on TV and start crying. But it's like I don't even understand why people. Why you? Why would you go on and speak about another player in that way? Like, yeah, I I mean, I would say that it's his play. Why he didn't sign? Like, unless you really got beef with the dude. Like, why? Like, y'all supposed to be? Here's my thing, right? Here's my my players' association. Let me ask all you guys a question, right? And I thought about this today. Like, uh, one of the books I'm reading is um the narrative of Sojourner Truth, right? And she talks about um, slavery, essentially. And one of the things I realized in reading this book is, like, you know, a lot of us would say, if if it was me back in the day, I'd be like, all of us like to think that we'd be Nat Turner. But (laughs) when you're born into something and you're raised a certain way, you don't know any better, right? You be fiddling like a I was thinking about that. (laughs) I was thinking about that as it applies to today. So a lot of these dudes, mm-hmm. I think, will recognize years later, like how they came off and what they said wrong. But a lot of these dudes essentially had no one to guide them and, and kind of like, you know, um, teach them what's what's really going on. They only know what they know. Yo. They've been so they've been so like Yo. into football so long that they don't even recognize what's going on around them. They especially their sleep. That, Hashtag stay woke. That is such a that is such a brilliant point that expands beyond football. I think that you have two cat three categories really of person you know when it comes to oppressed and disenfranchised people you've got the the middle of the ground where we're comfortable complaining or pointing to stuff but we're not necessarily comfortable acting and changing things to the unknown then you got those that just, they're in the matrix. They know that, that, that the matrix is there, and they're cool with it because they benefit from it. To hell with everybody else. And then you have the rare or rare group of people who want to fight for the change and are comfortable with the unknown. But what do we know about the unknown? Human beings are more afraid of the, of the good that they don't know than the bad that they're familiar with and comfortable with. So... That's what it is, man. Great point. Great point. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that, like, you guys are right. And I think the part that just gets on my nerves more than anything is that these guys have generational wealth with three, four, five generations down the line don't even have to work. And, uh, and people are still afraid. Tobias, 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 Tobias. Do they really, though? 
I mean, statistics have shown us that no one's really, most of these guys haven't been able to like, you know, have that. What is it? What is the stat? 80, like seven 80%. years out of the league, eighty seven percent don't have 80, any money 80%. at all. Eighty percent go broke. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like we'll give you the bread while you're here to make bread for us, but we're not going to show you how to like you know make that transition. Um, we have the outliers that have made the transition and really have generational wealth, but most of these guys really don't even have generational wealth. They got flash you know now, but some with real money. <laughs> you know what it is? Also, I think what happens also. Many of these black athletes were caught up by white people as soon as they found they could run real fast or jump real high. And these black kids, hey, this white guy's been nice to me. There ain't no racism. But I believe a lot of black people don't understand what racism really is. They Salute think the racism is right. Charlotte. Listen, they I'm they on think, social media every day. You're right. Most people don't understand what racism is. They know what prejudice is or bias is, or, but they have bigotry. no clue what racism is or bigotry yeah. or another one. Yeah, they and, and, and like y'all, and think about it. Black folks sure think Charlottesville is racism. Is. Yeah, see, black folks think Charlottesville is racism. One, the white folks weren't mad because of those guys saying about black folks. They were mad when they said Jews won't replace us. That's when the white folks got mad. Keep game on that. But here's the thing. Oh, um, and, and to pass, besides that, it's also you know, to it took a white woman dying to get any kind of upward. So no, nah, yeah, I peep game on that. They killed three white people. You're so you're so pro white, but y'all killed three white people. What about white on white crime? But can I bring this up for you guys? I know you guys almost at the end. Uh, now he, like Ky, like Kyrie got traded. I think it was a good trade for both sides, to be honest with you, uh, because I didn't think I know Boston really didn't want to sign Isaiah because it's kind of hard to sign a five seven guy the thirty million a year and with a bad hip about to turn thirty. Now I do believe Kyrie is Danny Microwave Johnson with a crossover. But hey, you yeah. gotta roll the dice yeah. sometimes in basketball. Uh keep saying that's not an time, insult, man. Yeah, but what I'm Yo, saying is that Tobias, look I, I, don't not think an you, I don't think you remember Vinny. Vinny was a beast. I don't I ain't an insult, but no one but Vinny's a Yo. Vinny's a beast though, but listen but, Tobias, Vinny was better than the, one of those guys that got into the Hall of Fame, but I ain't going to say no names. Damn. <laughs> hey, but you know what, though? And like, I, I get tired of people saying, well, you know, LeBron, when he leaves the team, they get worse. LeBron, it reminds me of a locust or the bull weevil. They come in, destroy the field, then everybody's like, how come he can't grow no crops? That's what he does, guys. Now once he leaves, this team is, is going to be old. No salary cap space. And the, we already know Cleveland will get the number one pick anyway. They always get the number one pick for some reason. And so uh, they got number one pick more than the Lakers. But everybody keeps saying the league want the Lakers to win. How come Cleveland keeps getting number one pick then? <laughs> you hey, know? I'll I, I tell you one thing. The one thing about this trade no one has talked about yet is that Kyrie has been put in the perfect position to fill his next boat when he goes out on his next cruise. You ain't lying. <laughs> that boat go be lit. Uh, hey. but, but you know not, what? Though? Not, not really, I, though, Jim. Not, hey. They don't have that kind of quality up there. <laughs> they yeah. got them. They got those types, but they don't have the quality. You know, they like. But you know, guys, I'll say this also. And like, awesome. everybody's mad when Kyron do his own thing. Well, maybe, just about. maybe, if you're a competitor, I'm not even the biggest Kyrie fan, but I got to look at it this way. Maybe. He, he probably gets tired of people saying, well, before LeBron got there, you ain't do nothing. Oh, the only reason you got a championship is because of LeBron, even though he, Kyrie played a big part of it. But if, if LeBron loses, it's everybody else's fault. So maybe yeah, he just so. wants to see what he can do. I'd be tired of that. I know that. So, Billy, really, eh, you know, no problem hey, in that. But Jimmy, you guys another have thing. a good one, man. All right, you too, Tobias, man. Thanks for your call. We'll wrap to you next week. I Take it easy. Hey, Jim, another thing that a lot of people didn't, you know, aren't really talking about, um, somebody said, somebody mentioned it. Somebody kind of glossed over it a few minutes ago. I didn't, I don't know which one of y'all it was. Uh, it might have been Tobias. The fact that Isaiah Thomas is injured right now. They, 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 they're not sure that he's going to be back in time for the start of camp. So I don't know how yeah, long that lingers, but he never got surgery. Um, when he went out of the Eastern Conference Finals, he he opted 
against surgery. It could he could have gotten surgery to speed up the recovery, but right now he's not even clear for basketball activities. Um, and and they play each other, I think, on opening night. You know, people are going to be trying to judge the trade on opening night by, you know, who performs, how, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's that's a lot of that, you know, a lot of people aren't really talking about you the know, fact that the dude is still injured. Cra- what's crazy about this is like Kyrie put all the pressure on himself. Now you wanted to have your own spot. Now you got your own spot. So now what? So I think Kyrie about to average like forty a game and then lose every game. <laughs> Ah, I got Yo, he gonna let that thing fly. <laughs> I mean, but I, I don't even think having your own team just meant that he was gonna shoot more because it's not like he didn't get his shots. I don't think that's what he was complaining about. I think it was more about what Tobias was saying. Like he, the, the talk probably gets to you after a while because people act like you're not there when LeBron James is on your team. You know what I'm saying? Everybody oh, overrates yeah. every knows. role player that LeBron plays with. Oh, my God, Tristan Thompson is this and that. And then you find out, well, all right, we were tripping. Tristan Thompson is just Tristan Thompson. But when he plays with superstars, yeah. he just overshadows them because they have but to guess sacrifice what, though? so much. Dev, I agree with everything you said. Kyrie's still about to let that thing fly like never before. Yo, yo, my man is letting that oop go like Jay Reed. Yo, Ky- yo, Kyrie Irving, aka Heckler and Koch. <laughs> yo, um, Scott, you're in the Call of Duty chat Kyrie, room. Call of Duty Kyrie, go report for duty this season. That's all I'm saying. Skyview said at Blueprint exactly forty a game and fifty losses. Kyrie and team lost fifty games. I put up forty though. Yo, nah, I, I don't think he that kind of type of dude. I don't know. That's just me. I mean, I, I hope not. I, I, I hope not. I think he cares. I, I just honestly, think he's, I, I think I like he's just too prideful to be somebody lackey. You know what I mean? That's that's what I think it is. I like I like some dude. I, I like Kyrie. If he don't give Hayward the ball. If he don't give Hayward the ball, they going to the Charlotte villain. Like they, they, they not gonna mess with him like that. He gotta give Hayward the ball. I actually think those type, those two dudes will play well together. But I think they gave up. Like me and B talked about earlier, I think giving up Crowder and having to get rid of um, um, your boy Avery, Bre- Avery Bre- Hayward signing work. Avery Avery Bradley to make the Gordon Hayward signing work. I think. Yeah, I, I think that hurts this team a lot. That's why I was trying to ask B, like, do you think there's still a lot to be a top two seed in the East? Like, if they are, it's only I because do. the East I is do. trash. But I don't think, I don't think they are locked to be a top two seed. Maybe, maybe a top four seed. But but here's my question. So so, so are, are you seed. putting Toronto above them? Like, who's going to take their place if they're not if they're not top two? Who's who do you see like jumping Washington. in that spot? We all know. We, Washington, maybe? I maybe think Washington, Washington has Washington. the best shot. Maybe it's something Washington. about Toronto I just don't like. Um, young, probably young because they're Milwaukee not even going to have a shot to be higher this upcoming season. Um, I don't know if they're ready I yet. Um, say, I'm, I do like I'm, I do like, the same as you. I'm like, I don't really – I don't have full confidence in, like, a Washington, but it's not really them. It's just it's, – it's looking at the Celtics. It's like, okay – your offensive yeah, offensive firepower. That's my thing. Two, my thing is, are good. When I look, I agree with you. When I look at the Celtics, they don't seem to be that much stronger than they were last year. But when I look right. around, like it's also like, damn, who else is going to take your spot? You know what I mean? Right. Go ahead and come. I mean, it's like, it's like I, I think it's like when you in a, it's like when you in a party and the chick is all right, right? You like she all right, she ain't bad. But you look around and like, well, damn. I mean, in this room, what else um, I'm gonna do? Yeah, you might as well come back to my dorm room. You know what I mean? You know how it is in college. Anyway, yeah, um, she, she ain't but, but that's to my be point. So I, yeah, exa- exactly. So that's the thing. So um, it's interesting, though, man. I, I still think this is amazing that we are uh, in mid-August and it's still talking about the NBA. And a lot of that is Kaepernick, too, because anything, anytime we talk about football, it's really not about football. It's really not about football. It, it, it's crazy because it's not just our show. I listen to other podcasts. I'm not really a TV guy. I'm a podcast. And also just watching social media. And um, 
it's like basketball is kind of I don't know how they did this, um, but they're dominating, man. Like and, and salute to Roy Burton who told me he thinks that this started with the decision. Back in twenty ten. I don't yeah, know. I don't know if it's been popping that long. Cause yeah. I cause I don't feel I don't feel this way every year. Like it's something about this year that's different. Like it, it usually doesn't like, go. This it, it's like it's like people used to fake like there was an arms race, but now Cats is like unapologetic about yo. We just gonna load up. Like right. teams are becoming unapologetic about it. Right. I mean, because even with the decision, LeBron kind of waited until most of the other cats had signed somewhere. But it didn't. He didn't. It didn't go that deep into the summer. Like he made the joint. Yeah. And and I guess you know that year, it was sparking a little bit because you just wanted to see what Miami was going to do. All right, y'all got these three dudes. What else they going to do in the summer? And you know they having their little rallies and parties with the not one and the not twos and the not eights and not nines. But <laughs> but this year, man, it's just it's just something and, different, man. Well. It's like, and this is this is the biggest move of the summer, and this came damn near training camp about to start. Yeah, we almost in September, September, yo. Damn, that's rare. Yo, man, that's definitely fact, rare. Hey, Casey Mack, I know you listen out there, Casey Mack. Um, remember you told me that Kyrie would be on Cleveland's roster this season? Oh, all right. That's all. <laughs> Got it. My day. This, this is another thing people because remember I kept asking like what leverage did he have? I'm I'm still wondering why Danny Ainge agreed to give up so much. Um and people kept saying I mean this is what I don't understand. People kept saying Cleveland didn't have a choice. I'm like, but Cleveland did have a choice. Dude was under contract. If they said FOH, so they could just say FOH. But if Cleveland's trying to get something for him because he asked for a trade, then why does Danny Ainge give up as much as he as much as he got? But maybe that's because Cleveland flex. Like we don't really have to trade him. Like he got to come I mean, play. It's possible. But this also this adage with the NBA execs, and I've heard people say this right. So if you look at this overall trade, who's the best player in this entire trade? I think Kyrie. Kyrie. Kyrie, right? Yeah, Kyrie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. I've heard execs say this. They say that no matter like what the packages are, whoever gets the best player wins the trade. I don't know if I necessarily <laughs> agree with that, but see, yeah. um, but when you already have you know LeBron I mean? and and a team that's been to the finals like three straight times on the other team already, that's when the it, it, the area grays a little bit. You're like, well, if you add this with LeBron, then they might have gotten a little bit stronger. But who knows? Because the Celtics, Celtics have, the, Celtics have, the Celtics have the young rookie. They have Kyrie. Um, they just got Hayward. So they can look at them as have, they, they, they may feel like they have their nucleus in, in, in place. And they still got And they, and they got so, the no, second year player, no, Jalen no, Brown. No. So they got the two young Yeah, him too. Said. So y'all got two youngins, Kyrie. So not a bad squad overall. No. Um, and they still got Al no Horford down on the, on the block. So exactly. So it's like. They, I think they gave up depth, though. They gave up depth. While Cleveland and they still got those bit. picks, though. They still got those yeah. picks. They still got, yeah, I mean, they gave up. They gave up the one, though, that's going to be, that's probably the best one. You know, Brooklyn's unprotected pick is probably the best pick. So the they question gave that is, if you're, if, you're, if you're LeBron now, do you still just bump like you're on out? I still think he yeah. will. Yeah. I just think Cleveland yeah. set themselves up so like when LeBron bolts, at least we have this draft pick and maybe we can get lucky Jimmy. and get, you know, another superstar player from the draft. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Jimmy, we all we love we all love Isaiah Thomas and respect him for what he is and what he does. I smack fire out any any GM that gives that man two hundred million dollars. And that's what he wants. <laughs> if they not paying him that in, in Cleveland. Dan Gilbert is not giving a five foot seven, hundred and fifty pound man two hundred million dollars. So he, this is a one year yeah, thing. You're right. You're right. All right. Let me let's go to the phone lines real quick. Uh, we got Rob calling. Unless LeBron from, leave, if LeBron oh, leave, he may he may he may come up just based upon LeBron leave. Like LeBron gonna leave, and he may give Zeke all that bread. He better not. Rob, what's going on, brother? You in the war room? Oh, what's up, man? Can y'all hear me, man? Yeah, what you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why your Eagles are playing? You know your 20, Eagles on, 21 on NFL 12, Network. 
21 Pro. You're not watching your birds? Oh, no, 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 no. Right now I'm on my break, so I, I just... Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, shout out to Trey Song, Ooh Nana, but yo man, yo, I'm having, you know, first of all, shout out to my birds, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my birds. Uh, I love the team right now. Uh, thank, thank, thank goodness that we have an owner and a coach that uh, that that supported oh, Malcolm Jenkins uh, in, in the protest. You know, I think I think. Thank God the, we got a great backup quarterback. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A great, a great, a great, a great back. Well, well, I, I, who gives a, a backup credit? Who gives a, a backup great, credit? A great oh, white yeah. backup quarterback too, according to what Robbie's saying. A great Caucasian backup Caucasian set record backup quarterback. Who has man, man, you can, you can, <laughs> hey, you can, Rob, you, know, you can take the point and dial my man. I like my hands. Hands. I Doing a song. <laughs> huh? So what's up? What's up, Rob? Think Master. Think Master for allow me to raise my hand on a song. Well, 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 well. well everybody has their own um, different ways of protesting, but for me, I think Kaepernick. Uh, he changed my for. He changed my my. He he made me think a lot about. He 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 he's made me do do a lot just just from deep thinking. And I think I, I'm deciding. I'm probably never. I, I don't know if I know a sports arena because I probably would be the only person with, who would never stand for a national anthem again. You know, and I know it's probably gonna call some buckets or people say next to me. I might get in a fight with a couple of drunk, uh, non melanated yeah, people, the thing, but Rob. you know. Before this, they wouldn't even have noticed because I've really ever stood for national anthems at games. Yo, same here. I, I, Rob, nobody you said says that, anything now about that. be a thing because of Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I thought about that because never. I've never stood. But now, now it's like, yo, I, I'm, I got to be ready to throw hands because I already know what it's going to be if I go somewhere. Right. But I mean, I'm never going to a football game again. But I mean, you know. Yeah, me and I, B, I mean, to be I mean, at Wizards don't even games, like, going to a sporting event ch- ever again. See who was putting their hand over the biggest cans or something like that. We used to do that at Wizards games, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yo, 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 I'm, yo. I'm, I'm completely. I'm not even standing for bribes when they come in them. I'm not at a wedding no more. I ain't standing for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you protesting bribes? Yo, I'm oh. for the bribes, though. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Jimmy said I'm protesting. I'm mad because you got on white. And white means verse. Yo, I ain't but I know you ain't nothing no more, yo. Ryan. Ain't nobody want to tell me when to stand. What you mean stand? I ain't standing. What do you mean tell me to stand? <laughs> <laughs> he crazy, man. He crazy. But yo, but 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 yo, my bold, yo, my bold prediction cause cause <laughs> injury. My bold prediction is my team, my, my birds will make it to the playoffs, hands That's down. Bold. And uh, bold. Okay. Is, is they will make it to the playoffs, and my other bold prediction is uh, well, we're going to have at least three, Connor, at least three Connor, to four. Connor defense. McGregor in two. Uh, oh my gosh! Uh, no, I'll I'll take Floyd and Floyd and twelve. All right. So, what's your other bold prediction? Oh. We're going to have at least three. What? At, at least three. Defensive players to be uh, pro ballers, and probably, 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 if everybody's healthy, you probably have two all pro. But I'm I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say one. I'm gonna say right, one. So, Roger Cox. So your expectations for the okay. birds this year is a wild card loss and two three pro bowlers. I never much. said wild card yeah. loss. They okay, might make Garrett. it to the second round. I, I I just feel the edge. I feel this team coming together as one. I feel the <laughs> uh, the, the 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 only thing that and, and I want to and, 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 and I want to ask this question to y'all because it's a question that me and Jay were talking about to about Mister Perdue on the internet. But 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 um but but but, but this team is coming together to the point where. Yeah. You know, the, the really the it, it, it's theirs to mess up. You know what I'm saying? And I think even, even in, 
I mean, forget. I mean, the defense is forget. Okay, forget the offense. I'm to say you, I'm sorry. The defense is to nasty. The defensive line is nasty. I mean, come on, I man. Call him Matt yet, but... uh, they got oh, potential. Oh, 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 I call him Matt. Rob, I gotta see him. I gotta see him play first on paper. That is definitely the strongest unit on the I know team. That. I know uh, that white I quarterback out there. Concern. I have a concern about our our linebackers. We're a little thin in terms of depth. Um, and and Ronald Darby, he you know he puts us in a great position. Um, him, but who's playing behind him? And what are we going to do about the kid that dyes his hair green that was drafted in the seventh round? To celebrate. All right, y'all everything. can talk about you know, the Eagles worried. another time. Uh, okay. I ain't trying to talk about okay. that. But, hey, but y'all can do but, that on but, Facebook. But 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 one thing I I I I wanted to say is because I've seen a couple of political uh uh you know like Robert Kraft and other teams support Donald Trump. How would you feel if your sports team, whether it be in any support, support that type of bigot or support that type of bigot? And could you could w- w- would it hurt you as a fan? Would it um uh, no. I mean, you have to dig deeper into the situation because, like, are they supporting, like, we know Kraft, we, you know, B. Austin kind of laid out their relationship, but everybody else, like, are they supporting Donald Trump or are they just Republicans? Because you expect them to be Republicans, right? (laughs) Rich white dudes, you know, what do you expect them to be? So, I mean, people are going to have their political beliefs and we already know what it's hitting for, so either you with it or you're not, but I can't, I can't, man, I can't, man, I can't, dude, man, I can't, man, I, you talk to the wrong dude, man. When, so you when know, you find know, out that Jeffrey I, Lurie voted for Trump, you out? Just I will pray, to, to be honest, I will pray on it. I'll probably have to find another team, man, unless you get another <laughs> owner, because it's like, uh, yo, How many I NFL wait, owners are you going to find that voted for whoever you voted for? Seriously, just I mean, like I mean, I, I mean, the Dolphins owner is the only owner that was outspoken about Kaepernick. I mean, you also got Jeffrey Lurie. He needed a Jeff, still voted. Jeffrey, he still voted. The Dolphins, Rob, 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 don't let the lip service fool you. The Dolphins needed a quarterback. Their quarterback went down. Did they sign Kaepernick? So he can speak all he wants. That don't mean nothing. I mean, uh, but but but, but he I'm talking about we spoke last. I'm about we spoke last. I'm about we spoke last year, but. For me, for for me, it's 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 difficult, man. I mean, I mean, the, the, I can't, I can't. I mean, my the way I was raised, my values. I cannot. I don't know if I can support. I mean, I, I mean that's Rob, like Rob, if you, you you have Rob, to you have every to owner in the league way voted to for separate. Trump. I'm just go ahead and tell you that. Man. Yeah, everybody voted for Trump. Hey, you got to find a way to separate your politics and your your political views from your enjoyment of your sport because, sorry to say, but they're all rich, so they're all al- more than likely aligned with the Republican Party. But furthermore, being a Republican doesn't make you a big Being a Republican doesn't make you, you know, a Trump supporter. Being a Republican doesn't make you racist. Like, let, let's not push that narrative because there have been plenty of examples of Democrats who are, who are you know, white supremacists. Hillary called us... Uh, what you call us, guys? Predators, uh, super predators, and, uh, super predators, super predators, and 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 uh, killed all them people in Haiti. Jimmy, that's like the fourth the, bell this this episode. The law. <laughs> I mean, supremacist bell. Yo, it's crazy. So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even trip, man. Just enjoy your football, you know, and know what it is. You know, Jeffrey Lord. Rob, I feel, I, I, I feel what you're saying, though. I feel what you're saying, though, Rob. I feel you, Paul. Um, no, no, no. The, you know, the, the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying is, if that's your case, then then roll out on the whole thing, just boycott. But if you're expecting these dudes, yeah, the owners of the it's team, sort of like to I not told, be it's sort of like I told, um, side, then it, it I told nothing Fred there. Purdue earlier, right? So I was talking to Fred Purdue, and he was telling me how, um, because you know I was talking trash because he a Patriots fan. And he was like, yeah, but I just wanted to win rings. And then I was like, yeah, because you care more about that than what's really important. So I was just trolling him, basically. <laughs> but what I, ended up telling, what I ended up telling him was this. I said, look, 
I'm not judging you. Like, you like what you like. If that don't bother you, cool. Like, you know what I mean? But at the same time, if you feel like Rob, that's cool too. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be, you got to uh, make your own decision. It's all boils down to. Right. Like, I, I told myself I'm not watching the games, but I'm not judging anybody who's watching the games. That's their choice. That's the great thing about this. Jimmy don't like sports to begin with. <laughs> I love my, my thing, my I love thing is this: if I that's love your reason, I watch every, I watch every big three game. I support. You know what I mean? Like, you know. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Trilogy. So, so, so support small me. businesses. Oh, support small businesses. My favorite song, yeah. Trilogy. Black owned businesses. <laughs> oh yeah, I support yeah. you. Yo man, but shout out to the Birds season. for having a great backup quarterback, man. Investing in Nick Foles. <laughs> <laughs> sure. right, right. Yeah, if he was next week, man, we got to roll with who, you. Who, who's the force? Of, who's the force of backup? Are you kidding me? That, right, I'm man. not supposed. Ain't you? Ain't you? I hear. Ain't you? I hear room for Kaepernick though. <laughs> hey, I did. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Rob was going. Rob was going to talk until the team even came on. Like, all right, Rob, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. Um. Hey Jim, so yeah, what's your predict? What's your prediction for the fight? For the, um, for the Barnum, hey, Barnum versus no, Bradley honestly Jones. though, it, it's funny though because I actually met the first person today who actually cares about the fight, and Barnum I thought he was joking. Bailey. But then I realized I realized that he uh, was an Irishman, so it means something else to him. But um, man, I think it's gonna be a joke. Um, I don't think Floyd gets an early knockout. Um, cause I think he's going to try to like, you know, dance around the ring and, and play around, but Floyd's definitely going to uh, handle this young man. He may knock him out later in the fight, but it's going to be a big joke. Um, you know, he, he kind of guaranteed a knockout, right? But for some reason, right. Will not go to distance. I'm but going he, to find somewhere to watch it. It's going to be a bar. I'm not paying for it. I mean, shot to the fire stick. Yeah, I, it's right. going to be a bar or someone's crib or something like that, but you know, it is what it is. That's how I am. Like, I'm, I'm curious enough to see it. I'm just not. I, I ain't paying the hundred. Like Martin, Martin say, Jim, I ain't paying the five. Um, yeah. <laughs> but and I also hope that somebody like on my block is getting it. I don't want to have to like waste gas to go see it either. That's that's almost paying. Um, if I could just order a quick Domino's to somebody house as contribution, I can do that and just walk down the street or something. But my man who usually get all the fights, he not even getting it. So I got to find some new neighbors. I'm going to start Dang. knocking on doors. And that's, you know, how you know, that's how you know this is a, this is a joke. Right, right. They still going to make their bread, though. They still going to make their bread. I, I, I sit and tell people, like, listen, the biggest winner of this whole thing, regardless of how anything goes down, is Conor McGregor because he's getting the biggest payday of his life in a fight he doesn't even deserve to get. Even if he decided that, hey, I'm going to become no. a professional boxer. How long will it take for you to yo, work your way up the floor? Like, he jumped the yo, line came up. just because it just of his mouth. Yo, he came. Yo, he came up. Yo, oh man, like I can't even. Like I've told people outside of the racist and white supremacist comments that he's using to market and promote the fight. Yo, I can't even be mad at Connor. <laughs> Listen, I can't even be mad at Connor. He's about to make a hundred million dollars and doesn't deserve it. Yo, who can be mad Yo, at that? Jim. And you know a lot of white supremacy to do it. Yo, shout out to Kirby Enthusiasm, which is coming back. Connor did a chat and cut. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Yo he, he's the whole boxing world with so a listen chat to that cut. amazing show, man. We gotta get out of here though, yo. Um, thank you, family, for joining us another time in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, on Group Me, uh, the WRS Game Time. Shout out to the chat the call, Group Me sound like call, a gorgeous call, 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 call to call in. We appreciate it. Those we didn't get to, we definitely apologize. Just ran out of time. Tune in next week live right here on demand in the WRS Podcast Network for more great sports talk. We'll recap another week in the world of sports. You know, as we'll be blessed with less than a week away from this explosive football season or social activist uh, season, as we're going to see. Um, so until then, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you right back here next time. Catch everything we do, all of our conversations, all of our uh, media, everything we do. WarroomSports.com. That's our Facebook link, our Twitter link, our YouTube link, our uh, Christian Mingle link. Everything is at WarroomSports.com. Also, pick up my book at SportsTheBook.com or WarroomSports.com. So until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. White supremacy. Thursday, 6 to 8, they do this. Shout out to Dev, PJ, 
be often Doc Bay on replay War Room Sports Dot com Get that mobile app it's not down, call it 323, smoking double O12. They be going and you sensitive, then oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, the tough foot. Uh. Show time like magic in the block course. Magic. Listen live, push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop dollars, pit stop knowledge. Uh. Should be in sports credits, I ain't talking college. Five guys, no beef though. Sports secret, secret, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a chief flow. KC, royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours, get your game up. Who's the best in sports cast? You better name us. What real sports? War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, a wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.